Hello everybody, my name is Dr. Amir Abbas and today I'm going to be talking about yet another session about research proposal writing. This session is in the continuation to my previous session. We will continue these sessions for this month of January. We'll be talking about different aspects of research proposal writing. And before I start this session, I will request you people for a number of things. First of all, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, Please do subscribe my YouTube channel and do not forget to press the bell icon. Secondly, if you want me to talk on a particular aspect of research proposal, please put that request in the comments because I read each one of the comments and I decide what to talk about on the basis of what is demanded. I just want to produce a series of sessions which will help you people to formulate research proposals for your dissertation, for your PhD thesis, and other of your works. Now, without any further delay, I will uh, uh, go forward towards uh, sharing my screen. And uh, let me adjust my screen. Actually, my tablet has uh, is now functioning weird. So let me readjust this now. Uh, and uh, during that, uh, when I'm readjusting my tablet, uh, uh, I will request you people to put in the comments about what do you think about this session? And do you like these sessions? Do you, you don't like these sessions? Whatever you think about it, put it in the comments, okay? And uh, I apologize for this. Uh, I just adjusted this tablet before coming online, but it, you know, the technology can be weird at times and sometimes you unexpected things happen. So I'm just readjusting it and sharing my screen from uh, the tablet so that I can talk related to uh, the research session. Just give me a few seconds. I'll be, uh, I'm just, trust me, I'm working on, on it. Uh, and as I told you people that as I'm adjusting my screen, I will request you people to talk about whatever you think about these sessions. If you have any suggestions related to the sessions, any feedback related to the sessions will be extremely welcomed and uh, I'm getting some uh, greetings from the Facebook users. Thanks a lot, uh, my friends. Uh, yeah, uh, just a minute. Okay, I am trying to adjust my tablet for, uh, just bear with me, okay? Just trying to share my screen. So um, in the meanwhile, you can also talk about anything, you, whatever you want to talk about related to the sessions. And uh, from where are you? What do you want? Uh, how do you like these sessions or not? And whatever you want, like uh, any type of feedback related to these sessions, uh, you are more than welcome to comment on them. These sessions are designed to provide you com uh, uh, to help you people with research trainings and other stuff. Um, and uh, you can also put your introduction in this uh, descriptions as well. I'm almost near to sharing my screen. I really apologize for this. And that was not the intention to take a lot of your time. Uh, but as I told you people, and I am almost there, just bear with me. And mm, and the good thing about taking this much time was that I was able to get almost um, many people who are live with me. So we are almost there. Let's hope that the technology is with me and my slides are loading as you can see it on the screen. As I told you people, I will repeat it once again, that this session is about research trainings. And here you go. Okay. So straightforward, without wasting any further time, I will go towards the agenda for this session. We'll talk about the importance of research question in formulating your research proposal, right? I will give you a litmus test. How would you check the clarity of your idea? Okay, you make a research question, you have an idea, but somebody tells you you have a good idea and somebody will tell you that you do not have a very good idea, okay? But I will tell you, a one simple litmus test that you do this thing 
and you will get to know whether your research idea is good or not good, okay? I will give you ideas about how to choose your research team, okay? Like in different situations, you will need your research team, whether you're working on a manuscript or you are working uh, on a thesis proposal for your PhD or MPhil or other work. How, what are the components or what do you need to think about when you're making your research team? And finally, we talk about the components of the research proposal. We will not go into a lot of details of these components. We will talk about individual components in the subsequent sessions. Okay, with this agenda, for this short session, I will move forward. One thing I will emphasize, and I've talked about this thing so much that uh, I've given a lot of talk about how to formulate your research questions. We'll put that information in the description. Okay, but one thing I will emphasize, give a lot of time in formulating your research question. Because when, if your research question is correct, if you have a correct research question, if there are no flaws in your research question, all the subsequent steps will become very easy. But if there are problems with your research question, then all of your subsequent sub steps will be flawed. So give a lot of time to your research question and formulating your research question. As I told you that I've talked, I've given a number of webinars on this topic. I'm going to put the link in the description to these multiple webinars. You can take a look at them. Then uh, what I want to emphasize is that when you make your research question, you need to make sure that you your research question is screened on the basis of the PICO and final criteria. Again, in those webinars, I've talked at length, what do I mean by PICO criteria? What do I mean by final criteria? Okay. Uh, additionally, do a lot of literature search because whenever you are uh, working on a research question, the idea is that you want to make sure that you know almost everything in that particular topic, in that particular area. For example, if I'm doing research on tuberculosis, I need to be knowing almost everything about what is happening, what is being researched about tuberculosis. If I'm doing research on COVID-19 vaccination, then I need to be knowing almost everything about COVID-19. So you need to do exhaustive literature search about the topic on which you are doing literature search and then formulate your research question. I will also advise you people to talk to the experts. Subject experts will help you formulate very good research question and then once you have formulated your research question, just review them before moving forward. There are a number of criteria. Two of them, I really like them. One is the PICO criteria and one of them is final criteria. And as I tell, I will put the links to the videos on which, in which I've talked about this criteria in detail. You can have a look at that and decide for yourself whether your research question on the basis of PICO criteria is good or not whether it's good on the basis of final criteria or not. Okay. So with that background, we'll move forward. Once you have formulated your research question, I'm going to give you one simple litmus test. Ask yourself a few questions. And if you have a clear answer to each one of these questions, then you are ready good to go. But if there is some ambiguity anywhere in these questions, then you need to I mean, think further and you need to clarify your idea further. First of all, ask yourself the question, from where do you intend to obtain the data? Okay, then from whom you want to obtain the data? This is a very important one. What is your exposure or treatment of interest? What is the outcome of interest? If you are ambiguous about any one of these points, then I would say that, okay, you're, you do not have clarity about your idea. You need to go back and make clarity on these points before going further. Now we'll move towards selecting the right team. And within the team members, first of all, is your research supervisor. In different contexts, different terminologies are used for the research supervisors. Some of them call them as research supervisors. Some of them call it as advisors. And in some places they call it as research chair. But whatever 
the terminology is we are talking about the person who will be the main mentor for your research work, who he or she will be guiding you throughout the research process to ensure that your research work is in line with the requirements of the standard research methodology so that you do not encounter any problems. You would want to choose your research supervisor based on your on the subject expertise and research experience in the area of your research interest. And talking about it further, when you're making your, so when you make your research supervisor or you choose your research supervisor, you choose your research committee members, you need to ensure that all of the team, the whole of the team has this combination of expertise. You need to have epidemiological expertise within your team. You need to have biostatistical expertise within your team. And at the same time, you also would want to have the subject expertise. Epidemiological and st statistical expertise are clear, clear, but what do we mean by subject expertise? For example, you are doing research on in cardiology, okay? You need to have, uh, and you're, for example, you are doing research on a particular aspect of electrophysiology. So you need to have a cardiologist who is expert, who has a particular expertise in electrophysiology. If you are doing research on anxiety disorder, then you need to have a psychiatrist or psychologist who has expertise in anxiety disorders. If you are doing research on personality disorders, then same applies over here. So you need to choose a team which is a combination of epidemiological, statistical, and subject expertise. Now coming to the big point. What are the contents of the research proposal? Here I will tell you people that I'm going to name each one of them. These are the major components of the research proposal. This is, I mean, um, this is a list which is, which I will say that it is the major headings within your research proposal. And each one of them have subcomponents just for the sake of clarity and avoiding complexity. I've just talked, I've put in only the major components over here. And I will be elaborating on each one of them in the subsequent videos. And I will talk about the subsections in the subsequent videos as well. So first of all, title and abstract, specific aims and hypothesis, background, study design and methods, data analysis plan, sample size and power analysis, what alternative exploration do you anticipate and what would, what are the anticipated limitations of your studies? What ethical details you want to share with the, uh, within your proposal because you'll be dealing with human subjects. So what do you plan to do to ensure the protection of human subjects? So with this, I will say that we will continue these sessions. And as I told you that in the subsequent sessions, what I will do is I will talk about each one of the uh, components which I shared in the previous slide, these components in detail. I will talk about the subsection of the individual components and I will elaborate on them that, okay, when we talk about specific aims, what are specific aims? What are the hypotheses? When we're talking about the background, how do you format your background, what sources you want to go, and uh, what are the different subcomponents of the background, and so on. I will be talking about each individual session. With this, I will request you people, if you like this video, please share it with your friends. Please put a comment in the comments. Please press the like button. And if you, if you have not subscribed my YouTube channel, please subscribe my YouTube channel. And if you want me to produce a video content on a particular aspect of research proposal, please put that in the comments because I get a number of requests uh, through my WhatsApp number, through my email address and that information got lost. But if the information is in the comments, uh, when I am reviewing my YouTube channel and I'm doing, uh, I'm planning, then that is the place from where I choose the topics for my subsequent videos. So if you want me to produce a particular emphasize on a particular aspect of the research proposal, please put that in the comments. Uh, thanks a lot for to all those who are watching this video live. And I'm also thankful to those who would be watching the recording of this video. Take care of yourself. Remain safe. Bye.